What's up YouTube? This is Yamago Productions and today I'm really excited to bring you this deck profile. This is going to be my Blue Eyes White Dragon deck for the GOAT format era of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you're enjoying the content, please let me know by leaving a like or a comment. And if you're really enjoying it and you want to see more videos just like this one, maybe even consider subscribing. Without any further ado, let's get straight into this deck profile. So the first monster we're going to be running is our triple copies of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Now, realistically, if you want to have your best odds of winning, you don't want to play three of this card. You honestly probably, if you just have your best odds of winning, you don't even want to play one of this card. You what? But I know everybody that's watching this deck profile is trying to be Seto Kaiba, and I don't blame you. I am too. That's why I made this deck. So we're going to run three of them because he runs three, and there's really no other way to play this deck. you got to run three. He's, he's the boss monster. He's probably the most recognizable monster in the game, and you got to run three. I mean, you're just doing him dirty if you don't. So the next monster we're going to run in this deck are triple copies of Facilia Dragon, the Dual Mode Beast. All right. This guy is really good because you can summon him for free, but his attack gets cut in half. Honestly, we don't really care that much about his attack because of our next card, which is going to be our triple copies of Metamorphosis. And so the reason he matters is because he was a level 7. You're going to try and use Metamorphosis on him to turn him into King Dragoon, all right? This is going to be the main way you bring out Blue Eyes White Dragon because, honestly, getting two monsters on the field to tribute summon for a vanilla beater, it just doesn't really work. It never really worked, to be honest. Like, even in Yugi Kaiba format, Blue Eyes wasn't really used that much, but he's only gotten worse over time, unfortunately. This is the main way you're going to want to bring him out, though, because once per turn, this card lets you special summon a dragon from your hand, and wouldn't you know, Blue Eyes White Dragon's a dragon. Who would have thought? So it works perfectly. This guy also gives you a little bit of protection. It makes it so your opponent can't target dragon type monsters with card effects. So that's really good also. That's going to be your main way of bringing them out. Um, just going to move these out of the way real quick. Farther synergizing with Metamorphosis, we're also going to run two copies of Scapegoat. You know, you'd always like to bring out King Dragoon with Metamorphosis, but sometimes that just doesn't work. Sometimes your opponent has a huge threat that you have to deal with, and you're going to need triple copies of Thousand Eyes Restrict. This combo is kind of what the format's named after. It's really good to throw in almost every deck, and it works especially well in this one because it just gives you more targets, so Metamorphosis is not a dead card. And then on top of that, Thousand Eyes is just really good. Um, you could argue he's actually even better than King Dragoon. Uh, definitely splash ability and overall he's probably better, but this is a Blue Eyes deck, and we're trying to bring out Blue Eyes. One more way you can actually bring out King Dragoon is with this next card. It's going to be our triple copies of Cyberstein. It is really nice that he's basically like Metamorphosis and Facilia Dragon put together because he just lets you bring out King Dragoon instantly. But the downside is like his cost is literally 5,000. And life points actually matter in, in this era of the game. It's not like the current meta where you're basically doing one or two turns. Life points are kind of irrelevant. This card makes it so if you get hit once you're dead, but duels normally last more than like one or two turns. So it's actually a, a huge drawback. And on top of that, he only has 700 attack. You got to play him face up to use his effect. So he's really going to cost you a lot of life points. I mean, if you don't win off of him, you're probably going to lose. And that's why I want to use the Facility or Dragon Metamorphosis over Cyberstein if you can. But sometimes, you know, like I said, that doesn't happen. That's why you have Cyberstein. I actually might cut him down to two and bump up one other card to three. And I'll explain that when I get to it. Like I said, this guy, when he uses effect, um, he has to be face up and he's only 700 attack points and he already costs you 500 life points or 5,000 life points. I wish it was 500. Actually, I kind of don't because then he would be really broken. Um, but he costs you a ton of life points to use and he leaves you wide open for attack. So in order to get him off the field, we're actually going to use triple copies of Monster Gate. All right, I think you can see where this is going. But basically, if you don't know what Monster Gate does, you tribute one card from your field, which is going to be this guy, after you've already brought out um, your King Dragoon. And you get to excavate cards until you can summon a monster, which is honestly great because it clears the field of this guy, and you're going to get another high-level monster out. We're kind of basically playing a sort of a variant of the Reasoning Gate deck, and so we're going to also play triple copies of Reasoning. Um, one thing I notice about a lot of Reasoning Gate decks is they run like one of each level of monster, so that way your opponent has the least odds of guessing the one that they're going to summon. I get where that strategy is coming from. It is a good idea, but I also think that like your opponent can literally only call one level. They can't call multiple levels, and if you get your level 8 hit or your level 7 hit, they're not going to call that again. That's actually why I pretty much just run the 3 7s and the 3 8s. Well, obviously, you know why I run the 3 8s. It's because of Blue Eyes. and Yeah, so I don't, I don't think you really need that much of variety. You know, worst case, you just don't get to summon a monster off reasoning, which is a bummer, but you have a bunch of other ways to summon monsters, and this deck is honestly surprisingly consistent. So that's why we use reasoning. It's just another way to get blue eyes out. It's another way to get Facilia Dragon out. All right, so this next card is the card I might actually bump up to two and take out a, a cyber sign for, and that's going to be our one copy of Sacred Crane. The reason for this is just because, like I said, Cyberstein costs you a ton of life points to use, 
and he leaves you really vulnerable for attack, so you really want to use another strategy to get out King Dragoon if you can. This card, I mean, it has 1600 attack, it's pretty good, it's not great, but it also lets you draw a card when it's special summoned, and you know, you're going to special summon it a pretty good amount with Monster Gate and Reasoning. On top of that, it's also a light monster, because we actually play a small Chaos engine in this deck with Black Luster Soldier and Chaos Sorcerer. It just works, Blue Eyes is a light monster, um, Facilia Dragon is a dark monster, Cyber Science a dark, Sacred Crane is a light. It honestly works. You have a really good amount of targets to summon these guys, and a lot of the times they'll be in the graveyard, so they're not that hard to get out. They're free special summon. It honestly just works. It's just some really good synergy with the deck. All right, so after that, um, one thing this deck really has issues with are Mirror Forces, Torrential Tributes, Ring of Destruction. So we got one Jinzo, and you know he basically can be summoned for free uh, off of Monster Gate and Reasoning. He just basically prevents your monsters from getting hit with traps you don't want to deal with. But on top of that, actually the only traps we run in this deck are also triple copies of Royal Decree. It's all for the same thing. We just want to negate traps. We just straight up lose to almost every trap in the game. So that's why we run these four cards. All right, after that, we only got two monsters left in the deck. We have our one copy of Tribe Infecting Virus because honestly, this guy is good in every deck. And we have our one copy of Breaker the Magical Warrior. Um, both these cards, they're just great. You know, you don't mind summoning them off of Monster Gate or Reasoning. Obviously, it'd be better to have a card with more attack, but honestly, these cards' effects are so good, it almost doesn't even matter. And Breaker already has pretty high attack. On top of that, he's also a dark. They're basically just staples that you see in every GOAT deck, and uh, that's why you run them, because they're just that great. Those are all the main strategies you're going for in this deck. All the cards that are left are basically just staples that you see in every GOAT deck. They're also all spells. So, we're going to run the Trinity... I'm sure you guys know what these cards do at this point. There's pretty much no need to explain them. Two copies of Book of Moon, just to flip anything that's problematic face down. Opponent's Thousand Eyes or Strix. And it also has some synergy with Noblemen of Cross Out, which we're going to also run two of. After that, we only got like four power spells left. We got our one copy of Snatch Steel to take our opponent's monsters, occasionally tribute them. We got our one copy of Premature Burial for when any of our really good monsters get put in the graveyard, which will happen pretty often. And then we got one copy of Mystical Space Typhoon for spot removal, and one copy of Heavy Storm, again, just because, you know, you really, this deck doesn't do well with traps, so you want to have a lot of ways to eliminate your opponent's back row before they're even a problem. Alright, well, that about wraps up this deck profile. Um, honestly, if you haven't tried this deck, I really recommend giving it a try. It's a lot of fun, and you'd be surprised. It actually is pretty consistent. Like I said, you know, it's not better than Go Control. This deck is never going to be better than Go Control, but it holds its own. It actually is really good. It's surprisingly consistent, and if you're going to play Blue Eyes from this format, this is the deck I'd recommend running. So if you're enjoying the content, please let me know by leaving a like or a comment, and if you're really enjoying it and you want to see more videos like this, maybe even consider subscribing. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.